Whether you're looking to learn about an industry, a company's culture, or your dream job, informational interviews will give you an insider view from people actually working in the field, which is something that you probably won't find elsewhere. And who knows, it might even lead to a job offer further down the line. What's up everyone, it's Kenji here, and today I thought I'd go over informational interviews, also known as coffee chats. What's nice about them is that it's an interview without the stress element, in that you're the one in control, you're the one asking the questions, instead of a regular interview where they're asking you questions and you don't really know what to expect. So I'll break the video down into four main parts. Firstly, the pre-interview prep. Secondly, the interview structure. Thirdly, the types of questions that you should ask with specific examples. And then fourthly, how to go about asking for a request, whether that be a job recommendation or just getting in touch with other relevant people. All right, let's get into it. Starting off with the interview prep, and there's three main things that you can do. Firstly, it has to do with looking at their LinkedIn profile. This is going to help you understand their position and how they got there. And from their point of view, it looks like you did your research if you know something about them already. Next up is to Google search their position. That's going to give you a better understanding of what they do, what kind of work hours they have, as well as their salaries if that's public information. And lastly, you should research the company's website. This will give you a better understanding of how the company operates and how it's structured. Also, you can see what positions are currently open and whether you could be a good fit for some. If that is the case, you may want to bring it up after during the interview, which we'll talk about later. Here's how you want to break down the informational interview. The first step is the pre-interview, which we already talked about earlier, and that should take around 15 minutes. Once on the call, the first part is your background, where you're going to explain a bit about who you are, secondly, what's on your mind, and then lastly, what they can help you with. This can be as simple as I'm a third year student at Cornell University studying business and I'm considering a career in management consulting and I was wondering if you could help me clarify some doubts I have about the industry. That brief introduction should only take a few minutes. After all, you're there to learn from them and if all you do is talk about yourself, you're obviously not gonna learn much. Next up are the questions and this really should be the bulk of your chat. You can generally split the questions into career related and job related. The career-related ones are more generic, so things like what are the common career paths in your field. On the other hand, the job-related ones are usually more specific, so things like what kind of skills do you use on your day-to-day. -day. Overall, I'd say this is a good way to split your questions, and if you're unsure about what to ask for specifically, don't worry, we'll get to that in the next section. Thirdly, you have the request, and this is where you ask for what you want. That's usually getting connected with somebody else that has more relevant information, or alternatively, just straight up asking for a job recommendation. And this is definitely the most delicate part of the interview. That call should last around 15 to 30 minutes, tending more towards the 30 if things are going well. And towards the end of the call, if you're short on time, you can always say, I realize that we're running out of time, I'd love to continue talking, but if you have other commitments, I completely understand. This way you come off politely, regardless of whether they say yes or they say no. Lastly, once the interview is done, you want to send them a thank you email where you thank them for their time and at the same time you might want to remind them of your request if they haven't gotten back to you in time. So moving on to the actual questions, but before we get into that, here's some mistakes to avoid. The first one has to do with asking Googleable questions. For example, if you're looking for a job at Google, don't ask about what university year you need to be in to apply for their internship if you can just find that in their FAQ section of the career website. Secondly, ask open-ended questions, not just yes-no questions. After all, you want this to be a conversation and be enjoyable for both parties. The last thing you want is to be a 50-question rapid-fire where they feel like they're being bombarded. With that, here's some of the questions you might want to ask. And remember, the goal here is to get as much information as possible without being intrusive, while at the same time causing a good impression. First off, some career-related ones, and one that I really like to start with was how did you begin your career? It's obviously quite open-ended and it will give you an insider knowledge of how they went about getting to where they are. Maybe they mentioned a specific internship that was really useful for them, maybe it was the type of degree that they did, or a specific course that they took. Another one that I like to ask is, as I'm trying to understand whether this position is right for me, are there any things you wish you had known when you were in my shoes? This is a soft, indirect way of asking, are there any things that you don't like about your current jobs, or did you make any mistakes that you wish you had known about? Lastly, there is what are some common career paths in this field? This will give you a good idea of what people working in this field currently aspire to and whether you see yourself doing that say in 5 to 10 years time. Next up we have some job related questions. The first one that I like to ask is what are some of your most common tasks? This way they'll tell you the specific tasks that they tend to work on and you can assess whether they're right for you. Also, I think it's better than just asking what's your day-to-day -day like, which is a bit more generic and they might just answer with, hey, I wake up at this time, I go to work, I typically do Excel, have lunch and then I present in the evening, as that's obviously not very useful information. 
Next up, we have what skills are essential to success in your job? I found this question especially useful when I was in university as I had a good bit of free time which meant that I could take on an additional course if I wanted to, learn a new skill or something like that. Similarly, if you want to ask the question to make it a bit more relatable to you, you can ask something like what steps would you suggest I take to prepare to enter for this type of a role? They could recommend anything from a particular internship, a type of course that you should take, or even an extracurricular activity. Lastly, if you want to learn more about the personal stuff, like the salaries or the work hours, I would try to approach those a bit more indirectly. So instead of asking how many hours do you work a week, you can say something like, hey, do you have any, any time for your hobbies after work? Similarly, if you want to ask about salary, instead of just asking how much you make, which is generally perceived as, as quite rude, you can instead ask them, hey, I saw on the internet that the pay range for this position is around 80,000, is that true? That way they can try to escape from the question by just saying more or less or something like that instead of just putting them on the spot. Overall, if you're unsure whether you'll remember these questions, you can always just have a notebook with you, that's perfectly fine. In my case, for example, I used to get quite nervous with these things, so I decided to just bring a notebook and make sure I have all the questions there. Also, feel free to write notes on what they're saying. It shows that you care about what they have to say, and at the same time, it's probably going to make them feel important, which is good. Do let them know that you'll be taking notes, especially if it's a phone call or a video call, where it's just going to look strange if you have your head down. Hey, are you sleeping? After the questions, we have the request and the next steps. And the request is usually just a question along the lines of, is there anybody else you think it would be beneficial for me to speak with? The idea here is that the more people that you speak to, the higher the odds that somebody is going to help you reach where you want to be, whether that be getting your dream job or just understanding a particular industry better. When you think about it, if you go into a job interview and you've already spoken with all of the interviewers before, that's obviously beneficial compared to a candidate that doesn't know any of them. That's a more conventional thing to ask, but if you feel like the chat went very well and you had an enjoyable conversation, you can always go a bit further and straight up ask something like, do you know of any opportunities that could be interesting to me at your company? Alternatively, if you already know the position that you'll be applying to, you can say, I'm going to be applying to the X position, is there anything I can do to maximize my chances of getting the job? By asking these questions, it is possible to get recommended for a job. So basically, if there's 100 resumes, yours might be on top. And don't be too afraid to ask these questions. At the end of the day, from your point of view, you don't have that much to lose. Maybe they just say no and that's that. But on the flip side, on the positive, if it does work out and you end up getting the job, that's obviously a very high upside. After a call, you should send them a follow-up note, basically thanking them for your time, and you might want to mention a thing or two that you found interesting, just to make it a bit more personal. Also, it's a good excuse to ask them any follow-up questions, or even remind them in case they've forgotten to do what they promised during the call, like say, recommending you for a job. So that's a general guide to informational interviews. Let me know down in the comments if you have any other future video ideas. That's all for this one. Hit the like, hit that subscribe if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.